the indie show, All Things Indie Podcast. This episode is brought to you by our Patreon members. Sign up right now, patreon.com forward slash VVC Life. And thank you to all of the patrons that have already signed up and are supporting us right now. <laughs> Hey, it's Tuesday. You know what that means. It's time for a brand new episode of the Indie Show, All Things Indie. Let's go ahead. It's time for One Time for Your Mind. One Time for Your Mind. So I like to always start off the show with One Time for Your Mind. If you're new to the show, One Time for Your Mind is when I'll let you know what's going on inside my head. And today, I just want to take a moment to um, take a moment for Rico Wade. As you all know, I'm a huge fan of Organized Noise Productions. I wear my love for Outkast on my sleeve. And so to find out that Rico Wade passed away unexpectedly it was kind of wild you know a lot of the music that i listen to is produced by organized noise that sound did something to me it was something i related to and became a fan instantly organized noise three-headed production monster rico wade Ray Murray, Patrick, Sleepy Brown, who I got a chance to interview once. He's the only one from Organized Noise I've got a chance to interview. <sighs> Big shout outs for a moment. Let's just take a moment of silence for Rico Wade. Let's start the show. Hey, yo, yo, that's all, man. The indie show. The indie show. My main man, 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 man. The indie show, indeed, the flow sickening. Masterminded by mastermind, the plot thickens. Good riddance to other pies, the odds against them. Tuesday at 8 p.m., we back in business. Key is in the building, Jay is in the building. Giving the feeling that most of y'all been missing. All things indie, is it banging or whack? Can't call it, but we'll be the judge of that. And logic came through with the verbal assist. Majorly, we envy, ain't no canceling this. And logic came through with the verbal assist. Majorly, we envy. Ain't no canceling this. And I'm gone. The Indy Show. We're mastermind. Yo, yo, yo. I love that intro, man. One time for your mind, two times to move your spine. It's the hip hop and show stopping fat phone dropping master of the wheels of steel. It's your man, Mastermind. And this is the Indy Show. All things Indy. Look, this is your home away from home. This is your new favorite podcast that's secretly a late night talk show. We like to spotlight entrepreneurs and people on the independent spectrum and showcase indie musicians. This is the place where they come to hang out and do their thing. You'll see them here before you see them out there doing it big. And we just love to love to have him and you here each and every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Let's go ahead and get this show on the road. It is time for my first segment. It's time for Hello Neighbor. Hello Neighbor. Look, I can't do this show without any of you guys, all right? And so now's a great time to tell everybody to tune in, go to vbclife.com and join us for all the fun on the indie show, All Things Indie, all right? So in Hello Neighbor, I'd like to just shout out people who make this show possible. If you know, if you ever want to become a platinum viewer 
what am I independence? All you have to do is watch the show three weeks in a row and we go chisel you onto our platinum plaque. All right. It's a new season. This is season eight. I think this is the third or fourth episode. I lost count. But what we do is uh, show y'all some little like, for instance, in the chat room. Look at that right there. Big shout outs to the West Coast. We got guns. He said, what's good, periods at home continuing his rehab process. That's what big shout out to guns and to Barry out there. Um, and this is an interactive show. You, the more that you interact with me, the crazier it's going to get. It's gonna be a lot of fun. This time is going to fly by. And I love talking with you guys. Again, this is interactive, this is fun, this is different. This is not your mama's podcast. All right, like I said. It's secretly a late night talk show. Anyway, let me shout out to these people. Look, look, shout out to Guns. I got Jay Kells. I got Miriam. And from last week's episode, I want to say uh, what's up to Playboy Row. I want to say what's up to Ron. Arrow, big shout outs. Shantae, Gigi, Kia, and much love to my guest, the lovely Carmen Cita, a.k.a. the Diva. It was all about her. Shout out to them. And I want to do a special get well shout outs to Perry Carter, like we just found out. Uh, we've been following his story. He was on death's door and he has worked his way back. He's out of the hospital. He is doing his rehab at home. Please continue to pray for Perry Carter. Shout out to Ray. And last but not least, to Shavana Graham. Um, keep them in your prayers. And what else? I want to shout out the guy that makes me look and sound good every week. My, my guy, my executive producer, the one and only JS1. Yo, what's going on? on? I am awake. I am awake and I am prepared. I promise. I'm awake and prepared. I appreciate that because you know how I do. I'm going to throw some stuff at you. And if if you're not ready, it, we gonna know. We gonna, we gonna see it. You might hit the wrong button, and you over in the corner just sleep. That's not gonna be good TV. Yeah, that's a fact. And you know we got family in the building, so we got to do it right. We got to be on point. So on let's get it right. Yo, um, real quick, why am I fuzzy? What are, what are we doing, Cameron? We just got through saying we gonna do this thing right, and now got me looking all crazy. That's that's your side. I'll have no control over your camera. So I am going to no look. I'm blaming you on this one. Look, <laughs> this is crazy. This is some hate. But um, real quick before we move on, I got to shout out that on this Saturday at 2 p.m. in Athens, Georgia, the movie, the documentary that I'm in, that my very first documentary, 35,000 watts. The story of college radio is premiering in Athens. I'm going to be in the building. Me, the diva, we're going to be out there doing our thing, watching this wonderful film of our college radio. If you love college radio, independent music, I need you to come. It's going to be at the Cine Theater in Athens, Georgia, 2 p.m. this Saturday. That's the 20th, I do believe. All right? And last but not least, okay, y'all remember how... I was on uh, Family Feud, right? So some time ago, earlier, like in February, somebody from Family Feud reached out to me. And they were basically saying, oh, you know, we love you here at Family Feud. You're basically royalty. Uh, you're part of the family. Your video got a billion hits, a million views, blah, blah, blah. We are doing a season three marathon. And I just want to get more information because we want to jazz up the season three because they've done one and two, they're like at least an hour, two hours long, right? So season three marathon featuring me and my family is out now. If you go to the Family Feud YouTube page, look for the season three marathon part two of two, all right? Gotcha. I, have, I haven't seen it. I've only seen about 10 seconds of it. I still feel so uh, y'all check it out. I'm going to check it out this weekend, all right, or tomorrow. All right, so that's it. That's all I wanted to talk about. Let's go ahead to our next segment. It's called Previously On. Previously On, Ready to Die. We're sending you back to the future. Okay, all right. As you can tell, 
Uh, so previously on is about last week's episode. And last week's episode, I um, had as my guest, my lovely wife, the diva. We celebrated her 50th birthday on the show live. She loved every minute. Did you love the video, baby? Love the show? Yes. Oh, here we go. Yeah, I say in the audience, she loved every minute of it. You got to take my word for it. Look, I'm looking in <laughs> in the virtual green room, and Adria is just dying. All right, look, a uh, new friend of the family. Look, oh, there she is. Look at that. She's watching. There we talking about. She loved it. All right, I'll let her put it in the chat how much she loved it. Anyway, so um, this clip from last week's episode is when it happened i immediately told js i was like yo this is the clip from next week's will uh you know previously on uh one of our will be the judge of that uh contenders from memphis goes by the name of adria sang a little song for our birthday girl js1 go ahead play that clip um <laughs> adria <laughs> Can, Can you, you do, do a, a quick, quick happy, happy birthday, birthday song riff for uh, the diva? Yes, I can. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear diva. Happy woman can sing s-a-n-g bing that woman can sing all right look she is um one win away from being i will be the judge of that champion we'll get to that when we get to we'll be the judge of that all right shawna can sing big shout outs to memphis representing all right um with that said let's get this show on the road my guest is waiting and i'm ready to talk to this individual let me see this young man right here is a husband, a father, a sound engineer, a DJ. I don't know if he still skateboards. He is also the co-founder of BBC Radio. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> boys and girls, children of all ages, put your hands together for one of the coolest dudes out there, the one and only Matthew Borland. Wow, you really set the bar high. Hey, <laughs> right, that's what we do, man. You family, I got to keep it one hundred, dude. You really, you really set the bar. For, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. go. Let's go. All right, so, so oh, look at that. All right, so, there's only one rule on this show: is you got to keep it one hundred. You go keep it one hundred. I don't know when I ever haven't. So let's go. Oh, <laughs> we got stories today. You can ask JS one right there. I see. He knows. <laughs> so. So, because JS1 is also a co founder of uh, BBC Radio, this is going to be an interesting show because my guy JS1 is going to be participating as well in this show because we would not be here if it wasn't for the both of them. So, I thank you. This is kind of like a mini reunion. So, we're going to have a lot of fun. You ready to rock and roll? I'm ready. Let's go. Let's yeah, go. I didn't realize Jamal was the board operator, and then I heard him, and I was like, "Oh, okay." Let's go. <laughs> yep, yep. I've been reduced to a board op. It's all good. Oh, <laughs> uh, executive you know producer, my friend. Yeah, yeah, nice titles, nice titles. And also, let's think about all of the years and, and not dive too far down memory lane just yet. But every single one of the three of us has done the board operation for a host for one of the other shows. So it's That's all we've all done that job. So that is yeah. a fact. Facts <laughs> on facts. Look, dude, if y'all want to laugh, y'all want to get some stories and just get all up in my business. Tap it in now. Spread the word because it's going down. I want to pick this man's brain. But let's go ahead and get started. It's time for Elevator Pitch. Who the hell do you think you are? Yes, this that's what I that's the face I look forward to. Uh, people laughing. 
Uh, yes, these segment cards rock. All right, man. We're going to the third floor. This is elevator pitch. You have 30 seconds to pitch yourself not only to me, but to the world at large. All right. So oh, man. No, pre- no. Hey, look, no pressure. All right. Because if you <laughs> crash and burn, I'm going to say Matt, Matthew, Matt Dog, MTSC. Yeah. I'm gonna have to let I'm gonna have to let you go, dog. But it was a gotcha. pleasure to have you on the show. All right, yeah, bro. <laughs> but no pressure because I believe in you. All right, JS1. I need 30 seconds on the board. All right. All right. That's 30 it, it, seconds. It, it. JS will tell you when to go. You rock your you you rock out. All right. Three, two, one, let's go. Wow, so this is kind of like a first date pitch, but at the same time, you're pitching your own music or your own career or any of these other things. I, I'm way too damn old to be worrying about somebody else giving me shine, giving me a contract, giving me clout. Like, I have my own publishing. I have my own production. I do my own engineering. I do my own graphics. I don't need somebody else to get me to the third floor. I'll take the stairs. I'm doing it the right way, not the easy way. Yo! <laughs> I got stuck the landing. Stuck the landing. I you know, if you would have asked me to do that like 15 years ago, I probably would have been concerned about it. But at this point, it's like it, you record labels need to die. And mm. there's there's so much of this where like these major labels aren't really doing the artists a service. They're not doing the fan base a service. Ooh, we as musicians, spy. we as musicians can do so much better on our own without them trying to like dip into our pockets and take money that they don't they haven't earned. Now, you know, 20 years ago, 50 years ago, that was different. But it, it, where we are now, it's like you don't need all of those things. And nine times out of 10, along with those things, you get this, you, you get pigeon held into something, right? You, what if you get a, you, maybe you get just a, a a distribution deal, but it's very unlikely, right? You're going to get a development deal bundled Mm -hmm. into that. You might get a 360 deal. So then on the label is making money off the money that you make at tour while they're not even doing anything. Like you can do all of that on your own with the right amount of work. So tell him why you're mad, what, son. Tell yeah, him why like, you're mad. I'm not even mad. I'm not even mad. You trapped me with some A and R or somebody in it. Like you know, it's like, hey, like I'm gonna have a co- if if I was in an elevator with like Jimmy Iovine, sure, we can have a conversation. But it's not one of those things where like if I don't do well by the time I hit level three, then my life's over. No, nah, we're cool. We're cool. <laughs> like, my catalog will continue. I'm still going to keep doing what I'm doing. It's going to be fine. <laughs> my God, my God. Okay, then. well, you passed that one. Now it's time for New Phone Who This. New Phone Who This. New Phone Who This. All right, I told you what the rules are. New Phone Who This, I'm going to ask you 10 questions, 10 rapid right. fire questions. All you have to do is keep it 100. Continue to keep it 100. Ready? Let go. All right. Fire up first question. Let's go. <laughs> What's your favorite superstition? Oh man. That's tough. Um, my favorite superstition. <laughs> I don't I I don't I'm I'm Scotch Irish, so there's a ton of them. Um but as a kid, and I think I still gravitate into this, is like the existence of werewolves. You believe in werewolves? No, I just think it's fun to pretend that they might exist. And then part of my brain is like, maybe they do. Maybe mm. they don't. I don't know. Um, the logical side of my brain is like, nah. But the 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 um, the childlike sort of in wonder brain is like, ah, werewolves are kind of like Bigfoot. And Bigfoot seems cool. And I sure wish Bigfoot was real. So that's where my brain goes. When I said keep it 100, I didn't mean just tell us all the crazy parts. Of your Am life. I giving you too much? I mean, hey, dude, it's, it's, oh. it's all good. Look, mine, mine is um, I don't split poles. If me and my wife uh, split a pole, uh, I'm either walking onto her side or dragging her onto my side. And okay. I, yeah, I don't do that. It's just something my mama used to do that growing up, so now it's stuck. All right, next Makes question. Sense. 
And also, people in the chat, this is interactive, so you can answer it as well, and I'm going to put your answers on the screen. All right, next question. Do you leave or sit in the car when your favorite song comes on? No, I'm staying in the car. Everybody yeah. staying in the car. That's what it's yeah. Okay, uh, bonus question. What is that one song that's going to make you stay in the car? Oh, that's hard. Can we? Uh, that's tough. Like, yes, that's what uh, I do. I ask tough questions. Yeah, but I'm trying to like narrow it down by genre. <laughs> God dang. So you don't have anything that will pop up real quick. Uh, I it's that's it's tough because there's okay. so many songs that would keep me in the car. <laughs> that's, that's why he always in the car. People It's so many songs. No, I why do you think answer. I do tour management It's because I like to be in the car or in the plane or on the train or or whatever with the yeah. earbuds in okay then. hey next question <laughs> what song is currently stuck in your head oh uh it's wheels on the bus it's wheels on the bus <laughs> <laughs> I is got, there a story I behind got, that i got three kids uh -huh. The youngest one is just over one, and Wheels on the Bus is his jam. And so, like, <laughs> he will sing jam. it. He will sing it and wiggle his hands at, at, while eating. He will sing it in the car. If he gets upset and you sing it, he chills. Bus. So, unfortunately, that is the Wheels song that's the running through my head when I'm not thinking about other music or something else. Dude, you need the remix, though. I mean, no. But, yeah, my wife has been telling me I should do stuff like that. I had this, uh, this like, back back on the back like way back on a burner in another room idea for like a mixtape that would incorporate like children's songs and like 90s era hip-hop instrumentals but you know i have, have to, to make like, time, time to make that, that happen sir, big time for that uh shout out to Catherine Patton. she says blow the whistle is yes. uh right around in her head okay. right now that's what's gonna make us stay in the car all, all right. right big shout out to uh too short out there all right, next question. Do you answer calls from random or unknown phone numbers? Yes. Just the nature of my other other work. So doing tour management, you never know if that's a, you know, a vendor or a, a venue or a, a musician from somewhere that like isn't listed. I do like the way now though my phone will tell me if it's like it it's screening them previously, so it's like you, potential spam i'm not gonna pick it up but if it's just a phone number with no details i'll probably answer it just say no to spam all right <laughs> <laughs> next question name a really popular movie that you've never seen oh i i oh man um this is about to be funny <laughs> <laughs> there's uh, popular currently, or you know what? Whatever. I didn't see Oppenheimer, and I heard a lot of buzz about that. I want to know classic back in the day. Classic, because I haven't seen Oppenheimer either, and it's on Max. So yeah, mm. yeah. Mm. So. Classic popular movies. I because have. I haven't seen The Godfather two. All right, so I mm. put that out there. All right, so that's okay. Isn't there a Godfather a Godfather Part three? It is. I haven't seen that one either. Yeah, I never saw that one either. Uh, <laughs> I love that somebody put Cocoon. Yeah, you cocoon? <laughs> How did you miss out Cocoon? You older than me. <laughs> Everybody seen Cocoon. Them old folks. Come on now. I'm, re I'm really trying to think of something that people are like, yeah, I've seen that. And I'd be, oh, God. You're failing. Come on, McFly. Let's go. <laughs> Dude. Oh, did, did you see Friday? Any other Fridays? Yeah. All right. I was just, I was making sure, dude. I was making sure. Yo, so it's funny, funny you mentioned that. My brother and I were just talking about it. Apparently, uh, that you can go to the house where they like filmed all the front porch scenes and like do a photo op and stuff. But this somehow came up in conversation because apparently you can also like Airbnb the dungeon. Yes, where, you can. Where like, yeah. Was, and it, like me and some friends were talking about it and it was like, can we use the equipment? Is it still there, or do you just have access to the upstairs? I um, think the equipment anyway. is in there, but I can't. Uh, I think the I don't think you're too. allowed to touch it. I yeah. think you just have access to like see it. Mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, no, yeah, I want. Yeah, I want to go, I there, I wanna go there too. Yes. <laughs> um, next question. 
cocoon. <laughs> my God. <laughs> do you do a rolling or a full stop at stop signs? Depends on the state. Depends on the state. I'm gonna let that one. I'm gonna let that one slide. Okay. I mean, bonus question: What's Georgia? What's Georgia? Nah, for the most part, I'm I'm doing full stop. Full stop in Georgia. That, I mean, it. there are way too many people around here who like run through a stop sign, run through a red light. I'm just in so much of a hurry. My shit's important. But if you're out in the middle of nowhere on some weird dirt road in Alabama, you could probably just roll right through that stop sign. Yeah, all right. My guy said the laws are the same. <laughs> oh, yeah, the laws are the same. I'm just willing to break them in some places versus others. Yeah. Because it just really depends on the, on the, 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 like, the demeanor of the other drivers. Atlanta is a very mm -hmm. aggressive driving city, and I'm fine with that but I'm going to come to a full stop so that I can avoid being hit by one of those other aggressive people. Yes. Next question. Would you rather be on Survivor, Big Brother, or Amazing Race? I'm a fan of neither, but I like racing, so Amazing Race. All right. Amazing Race is a good one. Let's go. I'm, maybe That's I win, dope. maybe I lose, but at least we're racing. Yeah, because I'm not doing um, Survivor. No. I, I don't want to do Big Brother either. I feel like I'm already there, right? Like, I have cameras on my computer. I got a phone. I'm already on Big Brother. Oh, wow. The man <laughs> is watching you. Look, I've auditioned I, whoever for has two to out of three. Uh, I've auditioned for two out of three of those shows, and you already understand which one I haven't. All right. <laughs> Next question. Oh, wait, hold on. With my paycheck, I am I feel like I'm on Survivor. God. Oh. <laughs> Get it how you live, dog. Yeah. Next question. Do you sleep with the fan or air conditioner on? In the summertime, both. You both. Oh, that's freezing everybody. Else. Mm. Mm. No, it just depends on how you have it set, right? The fan will help, but you really need circulating air. You just got to have that circulating air. Okay, I got you. I got you. And uh, next question. Do you sleep with your socks on or off? <laughs> I love it. On how, it depends on how much I've had to drink before I go to bed. Wait, come <laughs> on, uh, explain yourself. <laughs> If I'm thinking about if if I'm if I'm relatively sober and I'm thinking about it, mm -hmm. I'm gonna take my socks off. But if I'm not, then mm -hmm. I might just climb in with my socks on. All right. And <laughs> Catherine says she sleeps with them off. Look, man, it's probably healthier to do it without without them on. But you know, sometimes no. you forget. <laughs> no, you should keep them my, on. If my, if my feet are cold, then the rest of my body is gonna be cold. I'm not gonna sleep well, so I'm gonna have to scratch around for some socks in the middle of the night and. Then I can go back to sleep. So this is I, fair. Yeah. Yeah, I need that. This makes sense. Especially in Jay, the time. Exactly. Uh Jay, I feel like that was question number nine. Am I right? Uh yeah, but we got one more down here before we get to the good one. So Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, right. a good one. <laughs> oh, uh, yes. What unpopular box office flop is your favorite? <laughs> that deserves some music flop. right there. They're so they're I like shitty movies, so that's tough. Oh, this is good. Okay. <laughs> that's I like good movies. Movie. I like good movies too, but um that that's hard. These the movie questions are tough. Um man. And, and apparently music too. So look. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Shark Beetle too. Shark yes, I, I, you know what? Let's go back because I've actually never seen a single, single Sharknado. I've never seen a single one. Not holy, one. Who is this? Who is, whose man is this? Whose man is this? He's my, he's not, mine. I, I, not, I, I, one. <laughs> not one. Not one. I, I like terrible. I like terrible movies, but the concept of that just didn't appeal to me. And then they they were like, I don't know, ten deep, and I was like, uh, I, I'd have to go back and watch the first one. That's all you had to do is watch the first one. That's all. That okay. Well, all right. One. Well, then maybe I should. But yeah, there you go. Just get it out your system. All right. Speaking of getting it out of your system, this next question: 
is a very important question. This is one of the most important questions that I ask on this show. All right. It has broken. The answers have broken up relationships as well as strengthened bonds. Are you ready? I mean, you good people. And I hate to ask this question, but I have to ask this question. All right. Wait, so are they folks laughing? And let me see. It's yeah, me. Gorgeous. that's laughing. I got you. All right, here we go. <laughs> JS. I'm, I'm just now reading through the chat. I'm like, oh, ah. it's good. All right. <laughs> Most important question on the show. All right. How do you like your grits? Cheese, oh. salt and pepper, sugar, butter. And you can combine the answers any kind of way. <laughs> loving his reactions it make me feel good inside man all of the above what? wait what? what what put it all in there put it man, all in this, there this nigga is full of shit get out of here you are not putting put it all everything. in there although if 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 you can you know go light on the sugar what do you mean salt and pepper cheese that's really those are the main ones. A little butter. Hey, no. your, your guy put. Hey, can you throw? A, can his, you throw another your, one on there? Can we put? Can we put some shrimp in there or no? Yo, yo, your boy is putting sugar in grits. JS, I, I, I can't believe it. I did not know this was something. Hey, I did he not. Said know. it with his chest too. Well, <laughs> man, after living together for years, like we've lived together for years, I've never seen this nigga put sugar in grits. Ever. Actually, I don't even think we ate grits while we lived together, but. <laughs> We we didn't we didn't well all those oh, times there secrets were a few for times, you dog secrets there were, few, there were a few times where we went out and ate like you know food somewhere for breakfast and then had grits but yeah. they didn't yeah, yeah. that's because they already yeah. prepared it and at that point it was just cheese and salt and pepper which was, I mean those are my main two but I'd be okay with the other ones in there too and grits, there you go he doubling down on it man. <laughs> Grits is like a big bowl of mush anyway, my dude. So like, and don't get me wrong. Conversation don't, with don't, don't, please don't get. Actually, you know what? I don't give a shit if you get offended, but I do like grits. <laughs> so like, you know, if I like it a certain way and someone else doesn't, I that I'm the one eating it, and your taste buds are as unique as your thumbprint. So what I like might be completely different from any other person on the planet. I don't really care if that bothers somebody. What is this? Like, yeah, at least I don't you're, care. So Yo, at man. least you're not putting grape jelly in it. And, oh no! And oh, cinnamon. Go too far. Yes. That's like that. No. Why would you? Yes. Why do you it, need grape jelly? Do, is that a thing? That's a thing. I've discovered okay, well, that's you a know thing what? on the show. Let me get off my high horse because I literally just told you not to judge me, and now I'm judging somebody for putting mm -hmm. jam in there. So, like, yo, you go and put jam in your grits, whoever you are, but like, don't bring me that. There we go. <laughs> hey, I'm going to let it slide because you, you my people. I'm, I'm going to let it slide. <laughs> hey, he survived. Uh, congratulations. Put Barely. Together. Barely. Barely. I'm going to side eye you for the whole interview. All right. That's so, fine. <laughs> it's right. the indie show. It's, you see, it's my right. guy Matt Borland is in the building saying soundscape mastery. Um, yeah. uh, let me see. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to commercial, we're gonna pay some bills. We'll be back in two and two. It's the indie show. Hey everybody, in 2023, VVC Life is taking things to a whole new level. And how can you be a part of that? By joining our Patreon. Once you become a member, you'll get access to tons of new content every week. You also get access to our exclusive Discord and also some live events that are going to only be for our members. All of our shows like Indie Show, Every's Lounge, and Black Watch Theater all have exclusive content that you will be able to access anytime you want to. Also, you'll be supporting our growth. So why waste time? Join the Patreon right now. Patreon.com forward slash VVC Life. We'll see you guys in the comments. Peace. Real Reviews, Thursday at 8 at VVCLife.com. Every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on our YouTube page, VVCLife.com. That's right. Let's get it started. It's time for a We'll Be the Judge of That. Court is now in session. All right. Oh, little Judge Morty. All right. <clears throat>
So uh, you heard the sexy voiced man, and uh, we'll be the judge of that. We're going to be listening to music from three independent artists. Uh, we're all my guests, me, JS1. We are going to review, critique that song, and then allow the artist to do a little mini interview as well. All right. At the end of the day, we're going to uh, tabulate the votes, and whoever wins comes back for the next episode. If an artist wins three weeks in a row, they get to sit in the hot seat just like my man Matt over there. All right. Tonight, we have one such artist. She is from Memphis. She is two weeks in with the wins. Tonight could be her night. Can she do it? We about to find out. But before we find that out, let's find out about these first two artists before her. JS1, help me out. Who is our first artist of the night? The first artist of tonight is somebody that submitted back a while ago. Their name is Jesse Wu. And the name of the song is Realm. Let me. All right, let's give it a let's give it a gander. Okay. Call me, I'll be the only way Not the number you will die Who poppin' so bad, son? Who gon' I'm the one? We belong together Like do we stick together But nobody stick to your body like me But well, I'm yeah, way too divided like me Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm your brother, I ride like a cowgirl I excite you. I'm the fire that you can put out. I excite you. Don't try to fight it. Who blame him? Who shame? So figure who may who blame him to them. But I know we who may be not there. First thing crack of the morning, feeling when you inside your car, feeling need somebody to call and feel him. Yeah, you feel him. Oh, ma'am, feel him. I'll be under waiting you to give me what you want. Who back out the night, stop your front. You and I are really feeling something. Baby, we burning up like summer. I'm your rider, I ride like a cowgirl. I excite you. I'm the fire that you can put out. I excite you. Don't try to fight it, who blame him, who shame. So figure who may who blame him, throw them. But I know we who met him not there. When in the morning, when in the morning, when in the evening, know you see them. Call me, I'll be on the way. All right, so uh, y'all know how much I love a well-produced uh, music video, especially from an indie artist. That the video looked really nice. I'm gonna be with uh, just like uh, Guns. Guns said, "Well-produced, great video." Also, put up the flames. Oh, the divas in the building. She said, "I like it." Is this considered Afro beats? Good question. I'm gonna let uh, my guy Matt answer that question when we go to Matt. Um, I would put this in my um, 
playlist when I'm partying in South Beach. This is a nice little vibe and whatnot. So it could get it could get some rotation in my ride. Uh, I got no problems with it. Anybody else got any questions, comments, or concerns? Put them in the chat. Uh, Matt, what do you think? I like the production value. Um, the video is well done. Is uh, I, I just, you know, I I don't know if I'm the right person to say whether or not it's Afrobeat, um, but it's definitely something that you could have, you know, on. I think I agree with you, like a very like beach oriented sort of vacation type of situation. I think that would that would go right into rotation, um, especially if I'm like full relaxed mode at a resort. Oh yeah, um, but I do, I do, and and as much as I personally don't spend any time with video production, I do like to see video production from artists. There's just so much content in the world. It's nice mm -hmm. to see, like you know, quality video production. I'm gonna ask you that right now. I'm gonna uh, interview you real quick. Why is that you don't spend time with uh, video production? I um, I think. In order to, in order to go that route, you either need to do one direction or another, right? You, you of course can find your own in between those two, but I'm very much influenced by records, tapes, that dusty, grainy mm. kind of feel. So I'm okay with my graphics and my video content to also be representative of that, right? But okay. if but if I'm trying to present a like polished, clean, crispy, this was all recorded. There are no samples in there. There is no record fuzz. There's absolutely no, you know, resonant frequencies that need to be removed. Like it is pristine. It's clean. Then you want your video content to be the same way. And then to do that, you either need to one hire somebody who's good at that video production and has the equipment or source your own. And gotcha. for me, the influence is musically the stuff that I'm pulling from doesn't go with that. I just don't think it would make sense if I like, you know, put out this dusty old beat that half of it is like samples from four different records and then like some synths and cuts I put over the top of it. And then it's like this polished video. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I got <laughs> good answer. Good answer. All right. JS1. Yeah, yeah. Talk to me. What do you think about Jesse Wu? Um, yo, definitely. I, I definitely love the dance vibe of the video. It's it's high energy. Uh, I definitely got to go with Matt. I love the the visuals. I love the color coordination. Mm -hmm. uh, I love that Shorty could make it happen on her own without needing anything else extra except for like really fire <laughs> locations. Um, yo, definitely. It's already definitely a song that I play from time to time. So shout out to them. Uh, dope song, man. Dope song. I, I'm interested to in seeing how it stacks up against everything else we got today. This is true. All right. That's uh, the first one. That was Jesse Wu. All right, uh, JS. Who else we got up in there? Who want else? Who else want to be on the show? Hey, All right, I Jesse, I'm sorry you weren't able to be on the show, but if you tapped in, make sure you holler at us. We'll see what we can do. All right. That's the fact. All right. The second one this week is Run It Up Jordan, and he's from the DMV area. So let's see what this gentleman has going. They're coming with the video production. I say, uh, fuck is you talking about? Girl, shut up, just walk it out. Uh, show the going wild, stalking out. Uh, catch me inside Miss Park. I say, uh, you know I'm in love with a cougar. And my brother be toting a ruger. Uh, if you knew me, I could have been hooping. Uh, well, let's over, get back to the music. I say, uh, girl, change position. Uh, this ain't no job, it's a dangerous mission. Uh, she wanna fuck to the bang them bitch. If a nigga play dumb, better brain be me. I say, uh, I wanna fuck, but I'm sober. Uh, I get bored in the house, then I roll up. Uh, so you know I'ma tell you, come over. Uh, hit the pop on the block, and it's over. Hit the bot on the bot and it's over. Hit the bot on the bot and it's over. Hit the bot on the bot and it's over. Hit the bot on the bot and it's over. Hit the bot on the bot. She wanna chill, but she making it hot. And you know I can rock, shaking that shit. I be telling her stop. Can't stop, can't stop. I be shooting my shot like a floater. I be closing up like a folder. Ain't no limit, you know I'm a soldier. Hit the bot on the bot and it's over. Hit the bot on the bot and it's over. 
Hit the bat on the bat and it's over. Hit the bat on the bat and it's over. Hit the bat on the bat and it's over. Yo, oh, hmm. So let's go with the audience. Uh, Heath Gunn says the new Cha Cha Slide. Okay, then I see you. <laughs> Big shout out to the to the Dad Panther. He loves grits. I'm just saying. Look, dude, That's that was up. like 30, 30 minutes ago. So right. I don't know if you're on Metro or what, but I appreciate you tuning in. All right. Uh, Catherine just saw the video and she was just like, um, uh, and I'm sitting here like the whole time I was really waiting for a beat to drop, and I was just like, oh no, this is what I was trying to do. Okay, so we're gonna whisper on the beat, and then um you you do drop it, but then it was what it was, and I mean you have a lane, but I'm driving in another lane. I mean, but I like the video production. I I think I understand what you were trying to do. It's a high energy video with a beat that is to me doesn't match, but I can see how you can ride that beat with a lot of fun and a lot of energy. If I was into music production, I would probably explain it better. But for right now, I'm just like, Nah, this is this ain't it for me, dog. Nah, I'm good, but I appreciate you. The video looked good, Matt. Hey. What you what you got? I um, I I feel like it looks like it's fun. You mm -hmm. know, I I like I like a video that incorporates uh, local dance. I'm not a huge fan of shooting music videos at skate parks or places where you skate. Like people are trying to skate, scat. <laughs> Um, <laughs> like that's just a personal thing. Um, I've been, I've been, I've been at the skate park and have people like trying to shoot a, a TikTok video. It's like, hey man, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm over here skating. This is a skate park. There's a parking lot over there for that. Um, I, I feel like musically, it, a little anticlimactic. You know, like you're, you're ready yeah. for that energy, mm -hmm. and they look like they're having that, but the, the, the music doesn't necessarily reflect that. So I'm not I'm not saying I dislike it, but it's not necessarily for me. Musically, I'm underwhelmed. Yeah, yeah. JS, talk to That's me about it. Very interesting. So this artist, <clears throat> excuse me, is connected to one of my mentors, and like they, um... of course, they are. Look, and now they're mad. <laughs> no, no, don't worry. Don't worry about it. Oh, I, actually, not, I, think, I think this is super <laughs> educational for them. All right. So the point I was making is um, my, my mentor goes way back into like Baltimore club music, like 30 years. So like it's been an ongoing like scientific project to try to meld Baltimore club music with like hip hop. And it's still ongoing. Let's just say I, I would have to agree that I don't feel like the meld was good. You know what I'm saying? It was like, go. Oh, the pacing was great, but like the drum sounds, I, I wasn't really feeling. Uh, you should have had a very clear uh, snare. That was a problem. Um, and then I couldn't distinguish. It was hard for me to distinguish between the verse and the hook. And like, <clears throat> and he seemed to, he used a whole lot of gangster rhetoric and the visuals was like happy go lucky barbecue we're at the skate park chilling type vibes so it was a little bit of uh confusion there but like shout out to them they like, can't dance they can't boogie they still can't boogie all right peter rico wade so like you know what i'm saying uh yeah keep working on it man all right that's two that was running up jordan and before him was jesse Wu. I mean, his whole name is a sentence. Uh, run it up, Jordan. Run it up. Run up these votes for Jordan if you like that one, all right? And go, woo, if you like Jesse's uh, first video. All right. Mm -hmm. Our next artist is um, 
No stranger to this show. Mm-mm. She's two weeks in with the dub. Representing Memphis. Y'all put your hands together for the one and only Adria. Hello. What's Hi. happening, sweetheart? How y'all doing? I'm good. Look, look, look. I see you out there with the with the uh over the show, off the shoulder uh joint going on. Got the, no, the my little flower. Out. My little flower. Look, I got you. you ready. Feeling good outside. So mm. might as well pull a little bit of skin. No, you okay. show some skin, y'all. You show some skin. Hey, hey, Charles, are you in there? Hey, Charles, are you tapped in? Are you watching? Yeah, <laughs> right. All of this. Man. Anyway, how, how you how you living? You good? I'm great. Oh my gosh. I'm really oh, good. So just to let you know, uh uh, me and wifey, we still we've been talking about you since last week's show. Love your birthday song. And you yeah. seem like somebody, a, a long lost friend of ours. Is this we just love your vibe and was just like hey, you good you good people. <laughs> Thank you. I love y'all so much. I love this show. I love just enjoying it, having fun. Y'all be having me like backstage just laughing. So oh, I saw you laughing and you was jamming to the others. Before we get to talking yeah. about you, what did you think about the first two artists? Since I have you here, let's start with Jesse. What did you think about Jesse Wu? Jesse Wu, absolutely beautiful. I love her name. Uh, the visuals, um, just a dope song to vibe to. I could actually see myself like having that on repeat while I'm getting dressed, you know, going out with my girls and stuff. Okay. So All I right. really enjoyed that song. The second song, I really enjoyed like the dance portion of it. I feel like if they had a had like um a different beat with it it could hit because i mean it's got a it has a catchy hook to it but it just needs a different beat but i love the visual part of it i love the kids dancing and stuff so (laughs) i love the kids all right so (laughs) now so what is uh up with you as far as performances are you out there in the streets this weekend, the rest of this month? Oh my gosh. So April has been super busy. I am getting ready to shoot a video, but May is even more busy. I just got a book for a show. Yay. In- <laughs> okay. May 20th. I'm at nine o'clock. I'm super excited. It's going to be at Young, um, Young Avenue. So I'm just so blessed. Um, a lot of things uh, coming soon. I just can't wait to share it. Can't really, you know, talk about it because I no, ruined the surprise. But it's cool. in due time, look, you family. So time. you know, whenever you want to produce, promote something, fall through. We got you. All right. Definitely Love to have so. you. I definitely- now, uh, before we play your music video, what would it mean? You're two weeks in. The people love you. What would it mean if you won tonight? and got your own episode just like my man matt another blessing another opportunity to share the stage um with amazing people it would be a blessing i (laughs) i would love that all right so let's set it up um introduce this music video for everybody out there for the third time is it championship (laughs) material third time let's go What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Adria. This is Block. I hope you enjoy. Hello. The number that you are trying to reach is no longer accepting calls. You have been officially blocked. Goodbye. Oh, yeah. yeah. Give you so many times to get it right with me. But you'll be so juicy when it comes to me Let me reassure my time and availability Don't got no space for you And my phone cause we are through Even when I try And I close my eyes at night All I do is think about you So I'm waiting And I'm praying 
all the strength to get this angle out of my life. She's won two weeks in a row. Uh, Matt, I'm going to let you go first. <laughs> hey, Memphis, I see you. Thank you so much. I like Matt. this. I like this. There's, the, there's a cohesive message there. Your music fits your visuals. Um, it. This is good. I could listen to this. This is something that appeals to me. I like that. Um, I think little touches in the video flourishes, like the lens flares and stuff. Love that. It's simple, but it, like... It also has a complexity to it, as ridiculous as that sounds. That's I like it. Thank you. I like this one. Last one I wrote this one. <laughs> Final say. <laughs> there, there it is. <laughs> the dead panther said, "Sounds good in the car." All right. Oh, thank you. Chris Jefferson. Yeah, send it. Send it to me, or tell me where I can get. It. I want to listen to it on the desk. Oh, we yeah. got you. Yeah, she goes. Yeah. She goes. Definitely let you know. JS one. Talk to me. What did you think? Man, I've I, after listening to stiff competition and then of course seeing seeing the goddess on the screen again. On the screen. <laughs> I'm all sucking back in, like, oh damn. All right, well, I know her. I keep forgetting why I keep voting for this young lady until she comes on the screen. I, oh yeah, that's the exact reason why, right there. So, like, you know what I mean? Great vocals, tremendous smile. I, yo, even when you was trying to be mad, I, this is the first time I noticed this. You trying to yeah. be mad <laughs> in the video, and you kind of halfway smirking. <laughs> I start laughing. It's like it's hard for you to be mean. I, it's so crazy. You trying to be mean to the guy, but you don't know how to do it. That's the that's the cutest thing in the world. I no, I do not know how to be mean. <laughs> now I am about business, you know, but I don't I don't have a mean spirit. <laughs> That's why she blocked him. That's that was the nicest yeah, she, thing. That was she the nicest do. thing I could have done to save myself and him. <laughs> yeah. Non-confrontational. I got it. All right. So tell everybody how they can get in contact with you and support you and your music. Go. Yes. So my music is available on all platforms. Just type in Adria. I am on IG, uh, the real Adria, TikTok, the real Adria. Facebook, Adria Glenn. And I thank y'all so much for the support. I love y'all so much. <laughs> yeah, we appreciate you. You know, because real talk, you know, it's like a billion podcasts out there. And it really means a lot that you buy into what we're doing over here and you really believe in us and support us. Yeah. The le least we can do is show that same love back. So thank you for just being awesome, having great music, Aww. and for supporting us. Thank you, you see it on the screen right there. That's how you vote, people. If you're already in the YouTube section, just scroll over to the community section. Then you'll see your choices. 
your choices. I'm not going to tell you who to vote for. I'm not going <laughs> to tell you that. But you can vote for a dream. You know what my choice is just go click it. Yes. Do it. Do it right now. <laughs> Run it up, Jordan. <laughs> or Jesse Wu. I'm not going to tell you who to vote for, <laughs> but I need you to vote. Everybody needs to vote, please. Oh, All right. This Look, uh, and I, uh, there is an honor system. I, everyone who watches, I want to vote. I don't want you to call your cousins that didn't pay not one second of TV time and they start voting. You know, that's how you get like 300 votes for somebody. And I don't have that many viewers. All right. Real talk. If you're in there, just vote. Vote for your favorite person. I'm not going to tell you who to vote for. All right. Thank you all so much. Uh, you can kick it with us if you want to sit in the green room. You can. At the end of the show, we're going to let everyone know who the winner is. Adria, thank you so much. Big shout out to Miriam Graham. Thank Big you so out, much Graham. for making that happen. Yeah, if you stick around, we'll bring you back for the last word so you can kick your shouts, all right? All right. All right, thank you. That is Adria. Yes. Look, my guy, Dad Panther has already voted. What's your problem? Why <laughs> All right. Anyway, enough with that. Let's get to know our guest. One time for your mind. It is time for 101. I can't believe that it's finally me and you and you and me, just us. Yes. <laughs> is that supposed to be two people sitting across from a desk or like somebody? It, it almost looks like someone's in prison. <laughs> hey, how's it going in there? Not great. Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> this this is what we're doing today. All right, I got no. You. It's Man, all love. No, it's all oh. good. It's all love. Oh, it's oh all love. just real quick. All right, so I people love to call and text me and all crazy stuff while I'm on the show live. But this was a good message because I didn't get this message. Anybody that's in the ATL, close to the ATL, or plan on being in the ATL this Saturday, I just wanted to let you guys know that uh killer mike mr collar park and i guess the whole dungeon family crew they are going to be at backstage this saturday it's going to be a ride out day party for rico wade all right killer mike mr collar park and all the crew they're going to be out at backstage uh, in Atlanta, it's a ride out day party for Rico Wade. Just spreading the word. All right. So that's what's going down. All right. So uh, we're in the building with uh, my guy, Matt Boylan. Matt, Matt, Matt. So on the screen, you have MTSC. Yeah. What does that mean? Instead of instead of putting your name on there, you put MTSC. I know everybody in their mom was like, what is that? So uh, that's, the, down. that's down. a shorthand music handle. So um, we'll take it. I can go all the way back. So over the many years as a musician, there's been a lot of uh, different um, ideations of, uh, of like uh, names. Right. So mm -hmm. um, first it was DJ Channel Lock, which was like mm -hmm. my very first name that I chose as a DJ, which was a terrible name. But then I got a cease and desist from the tool company because they have the <laughs> You can ask JS1 about that. We were we were roommates at the time when I got an email from their legal department. And I was like, oh, and I looked them up. And, of course, they'd been practicing law since like 1923. So I was like, all right, I don't go to court. I'm going to change my name. <laughs> um, so, so I, okay, nope. Mm -mm. Um, and so then I, I had a couple of different variations of different names over over a period of time. And uh, and there was a there was a time where I was in a in like a, a, a collective group. Uh, called Wake, and there was a uh, a solo project that I released at the same time, and there were a couple of different reviews of it through different publications, and one of them made this reference to me uh, creating soundscapes, and because I had spent all of this time uh, trying to make not only like beat forward stuff like hip hop production and things that are influenced by that. I was also creating a lot of ambient textures and, and video game score film, film score stuff. And I was like, Oh yeah. Conjuring. Like I'm, I'm like working some sort of ill magic from somewhere. And then I was like, you know what? I'll just be Matthew, the soundscape conjurer. 
but that's a lot to write. Like, you you know, if you had to type that in on Instagram, you wouldn't, nobody would find me. No one would type that in on, on Spotify. Like no one's going to Google that. So then I was like, shorthand MTSC, um, cool. which is so much easier to manage. And, you know, after who knows how many different stage names and whatever, that's what I settled on. But typically when I meet people, I'm just like, hello, I'm Matthew. That's what's Forget up. Yeah, because if you spelled it out, everyone would probably think that you're about to play some uh, Dungeons and Dragons or something like that. So, yes, I get it. Yes, exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, th- this is simple. It's just a shorthand, and that and that's fine. I will answer to Matt or Matthew, which makes it so much easier. What is it about music that you love so much? Because look, man, you have so many different jobs, and <laughs> that relates to music. So. What is it about music and how did you start DJing? Um, so let's see, I feel like that's two questions. So it we'll is. start with the first one. Um, I, for as long as I can remember, was surrounded by music. My dad could pretty much play any instrument with strings, just pick it up and play it. Never had oh, wow. any formal training. Um, I started collecting records just for listening at a really early age, long before I was interested in like production and DJing. And uh, and there was a time where I was really into cars. And there was this kid, there was this kid who was kind of always on drugs who lived down the street from me. And he and he came around one day and was like, hey, man, I got these turntables and this mixer for sale. And I was like, hmm, how much is it? And I, of course, you know, re- I went to Guitar Center. I tried to figure out how much it was. And, and of course, he was selling it for way less. He probably stole it from somebody. But I was like, I'm going to buy this from him, clean it, and then I'm going to sell it. And the money I'm going to put into one of my cars. Only I hooked it all up to make sure it worked. And then I've never been without a turntable and a mixer since. Wow. And it's just kind of became an addiction. Every aspect of of my life has some level of music. Like, I feel like as human beings, music is very important for us. And and that's why I... I have a hard time trusting or being around people who are like, I don't like music. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love quiet. I like meditation. I like being outside in nature, but without music, I feel like life is a, is a boring, terrible, smelly thing. And music makes it so much better. Mm -hmm. Like music is therapy. Music is a way to express feelings. You might not be able to express anger, remorse, happiness, joy, whatever it is that you're feeling, music is there. There's somebody who wrote a piece of music that speaks to you on a level that is more than emotional. There might be something that, you know, vibrates at a particular frequency. Like there, there's so much to be said about the human experience and music that for me, it's like, I have to make music. I know that on a personal level, if I don't make music on a regular basis, I'm not as happy. I'm a grumpier, less friendly person if I don't interact with music in some way regularly. So for me, it's just like, I have to have music to exist. That makes sense. Oh, uh, uh, was it Technics, your first turntables? No, no, actually, the, those turntables he brought around were some old like belt drive Newmarks. They were garbage, <laughs> they <made> plastic <laughs> frames, you know, they were terrible. But Ooh. I learned to scratch on them. I learned to mix on them. I played my first few shows on them. And then, Whoa. you know, I had, and I've, of course, I met other DJs throughout Atlanta. And, you know, they're, they're, Atlanta has an amazing music scene and has for so many decades that, you know, it was like all it took was a little bit of this and that. And the next thing you know, you meet a DJ and it's like, okay, well, you know, maybe I need a set of Vestax. Maybe I need a Technique 1200s. Then the 1200s I have now are like, one of the original manufacturing so i I think they were uh, originally came off the line in like the 70s but you know the circuitry Mm. and stuff's been replaced but they're a tank so yeah yeah, it just kind of like progressed um and then along with that came this interest in like i want to travel and so i traveled with bands and so i've got a little bit of experience both performing but also doing tour managing um, which is why I've kind of like been able to build that into another career along with my engineering. And then I decided like, at some point years ago, I'm going to get a degree and I'm not just going to waste this on something ridiculous. And so I, I have a degree in engineering and a big portion of what I use this space for is like post-production. So I'm doing mastering for other musicians or um, a finalization for like podcasts, um, corporate communications. Uh, but obviously that like pays the bills the music is the most enjoyable part so you're able to balance your music with uh the nine to five yeah I mean, especially since over the past few years my nine to five has been like touring for events 
right? So I've I've worked as a touring manager for the for the companies that put on like outside lands and and Bonnaroo. I work for a company now that puts on the candlelight concerts. So I have cities all over the South where like whenever we do a launch, it's my responsibility to make sure that the string quartet is all set up and everything is appropriate for them. So I'm doing production and pre-production, which is a lot more management than it is music, but yeah. that allows me the opportunity to also work on music and engineering. And so it's, you know, it's all together. Like I can, I can take the same knowledge I have from being a DJ and have a conversation with, with the AV tech at a venue. Like, look, buddy, you're trying to charge me for, you know, five mics. I only need one mic and like, I don't need an AV tech. I can run the board. You can go, you know, Ooh, <laughs> like, well, we'll say it nicer than that. I mean, yeah. you, know, you ain't about to get over on me, I dog. Want. I know. Yeah, no, okay. Yeah. Obviously, and I, I think it makes, but... <laughs> so with, so what you're saying is as an artist or someone who's going to perform, it's best to know how everything works so they know if they're getting got or not. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you know what, as a, the first time I played shows, you know, I had no idea what, what the difference between a good sound man or a good, you know, live sound engineer or a bad live sound engineer would be right. And and at that time, I was like, you play in these tiny little venues and nine times out of 10, you don't get a good sound check. And then you're halfway through the show and you're like, well, I'm getting all this feedback from this this particular instrument. And you look up and there's nobody even over there. The sound guy went to the bar. <laughs> and so, you know, uh, it 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 behooves you as an artist to understand all the inner workings, one, so that you could tell the difference between a good and a bad sound engineer or a good and a bad guitar player and be able to communicate with them as well. You know, it's like understanding that, hey, I need a DI, not just, oh, this is my stuff. Can you hook it up? Because on the other side of it, being a live sound engineer and working that, it's super frustrating when someone comes in and is like, well, I'll just play the instrument. Well, you need to understand how it communicates with the rest. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you are making everyone else's job more difficult. And then you wonder why I'm not friendly to you the next time I see you, you know, mm -hmm. or like I'm not willing to. You got to kind of it's a give and take. Right. One okay. thing I learned from touring years ago is like I learned this from uh, this. Pl we played. This was in like 2009. We played the Knitting Factory in, in Los Angeles. This, this was like one of the last nights before they closed that location. And uh, and I I witnessed the because we've been brought out by this other label that was based there. And and I witnessed their team tip the sound engineer Ooh. before the show. Right. And everyone who played had this amazing sound and i was like no did you owe him money and it was like no 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 we always tip whatever let's call him james i don't remember his name we, we always tip james man because he's a good engineer but if we grease the wheels and so i started doing that and the next time i went on a tour in the southeast i took like i i, I made sure i had a budget for a little bit of tip money for the engineer and like hey man do, what do you want a case of beer you know like hey miss you're doing a really great job how much do I owe you as a tip? Oh, no, I don't need it. No, no, no. Yes, ma'am. You do need a tip. Like you're back here doing just as much work as we are up front. Um, so I think really understanding all the inner workings of everybody's position and all of that, it, it's helpful if you're going to be playing shows. It's helpful if you're working with a studio engineer. I can't stand when people are like, hey, man, I got this beat that I bought off of Beat Stars. Great. The, you know, you're coming in at like negative four LUFS. What, what am I going to do with that? That's you're way, you're way too loud. And then now you're sending me vocal takes that are like spliced out and recorded on your iPhone. Hey, it's a little grainy. Can you make it sound good? My guy. <laughs> it's like, um, so, you know, it, it's a, it's a give and take and understanding all the interactions and all the different levels and all the different facets of it, I think have made it to where, it, yeah, pretty much all of my work, regardless of what job I'm doing has music in it in some way. All right. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, in the building, my guy, it's Matthew, uh, MTSC, the Conjurer, the Soundscape Conjurer is <laughs> in the building. Please understand. Uh, and shout outs to Adria. She's watching and she says, you are dropping knowledge, sir. She's appreciating <laughs> all the gems that you are dropping. And I'm sure everyone else is. I, I know it you. sounds I know it sounds really ridiculous and, and 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 probably cliche, but like being an artist is the same as every every other 
human aspect in some way, right? Try to be a good person, treat other people with us at least some level of respect. And if you sure. go into that, even if you don't know what you're doing, you're going to, it's going to be easier in the long run, right? You're going to hit less, you're going to hit less brick walls. If you go into something, even if you're like, I don't really know versus being like, I'm the, I'm the stuff. Cool. Every rapper feels that way. Great. Every guitar player for every rock band who's the lead singer also feels that way. Good for you. <laughs> that only goes so far. Okay. All right. Look, folks. Hey, we got more with Matt uh, coming up next. I, I want to drop some money in your lap. It's time for Mastermind Games. <laughs> Let the games begin. All right. Tonight, I am feeling generous. Someone watching tonight has a chance to win my money someone can win up to ten dollars tonight sent via cash app so if you want to play put your cash app in the chat right now we're gonna randomly choose someone all right matt this is how it goes in mastermind games we have a game by the name of survey says and in survey says we've surveyed a hundred people probably in america all right your goal is to get the number one answer. All right. If you get the number one answer, you win a dollar. You put a dollar of my money in the bank. All right. And this eventually goes to somebody else. So I'm playing for somebody. Yes. All right. Whoever you are, I'm going to try to do my best for you. All right. Now, if you cool. get if you get three strikes, you win nothing. And oh, I get to keep my money. And I get no. to clown you and the people in the audience. I don't like giving up money, so please, I need you to lose. No hard oh, okay. feelings. Okay, all right. Yeah, all right. there we go. So if you could throw it, that would be great. All right, <laughs> I'm gonna try not to, but I. You know, yeah. Big I don't shout out to like this very much. So let's go. <laughs> Chris Jefferson says respect goes a long way. All right. Uh oh, Catherine Patton. Thinks she uh, she she has faith in you. She wants to win that money, Catherine. Congratulations. Let's see what happens. I hope to um, laugh at you and Matt as I keep my money in my wallet. <laughs> All right. Um, let the games begin. So here's the first question. All right. I just for practice like to do a practice run. All right. All right. So. Here is the question. All you have to do is answer the question and say final answer. When you say final answer, that locks in and you can't change it, okay? So your example question, name a kind of club that people join. Any club? Or do yeah. I have to think this is you the just, top one? Yeah. Well, you have to figure out whatever the top one is. Wow. Oh. Survey says... Uh, you don't have all day, sir. You do not I have all day. About, I, I literally don't know anything about No, that. you got to be a little bit faster. Plus, you can get help from the audience as well, right? <laughs> Mickey Mouse Club. Yeah, that's hilarious. Um, yeah, any you guys feel free to throw some hints in. Like, I, I don't, I don't do clubs. So, like, golf. Okay, sure. Join a golf club. I don't know about that. I feel like that's like a country club. That's. I need an answer, sir. It's been there you go. Country. Here we go. Golf. Final answer. Golf there. club. Final answer. All right. And please tell so, me there's a better club than that. I honestly, want to lose. I don't like golf. <laughs> A gym, gym oh, right. or a health ah, club. There right, you go. Right. Okay, that's a club. That's more like a membership. Why is the music so loud? Is it me? I don't know. Oh, <laughs> my bad. Is it? <laughs> is it me? Okay. All right. So yes. I so think gym I membership it. would have counted as club membership. Got it. Okay. Go. Uh, look, that's not a club. Is, there they go. <laughs> go way, yeah, not that's not it. a club. Okay. <laughs> that was the example. All right. Here we go. Now yeah. it counts. All right. All right. Ooh, almost gave the answer. All right. Here we go. Question number one. Name something a mother needs three of when she gives birth to triplets. 
Name now. something a mother needs three of when she gives birth to triplets. My guy said naps. Bottles. Find her lantern. What was what was that? Bottles. Bottles. Final answer. Final answer. He said that with confidence. He has three I, kids. I'm just throwing My God, out no. I, Look, I, I man got three some, kids. Other he understands. Thoughts, but that, yeah. Diapers. All right. <laughs> Tylenol. What, what they They're talking about? Good. Oh, the, good. I, oh yeah. diapers and Tylenol. And then Catherine gets her laugh on. Yes. <laughs> Naps was a good answer. All right. Survey says the answer is. Boom. I'm Cribs sorry. and bassinets. Oh, yeah. Number yeah. one. Yes. <laughs> You see, I have three, but I never had three at once. So we always only had the one crib and the one bassinet. So, and yes, that's why triplets. Triplets, right? Yeah. Triplets. You there could put go. all three of them in the same crib if you really felt fancy, but they no. let them just fight to the death. You know what I'm saying? I mean, they're triplets, though. They're going to strongest want to stay baby wins. Anyway. They're going to want to stay together anyway. Okay. Look, that's that one strike. Thing? You have nine more chances. All right. Wow. All right, let's go. Here we go. Let's see if we can get some money in this bank. All right, number two. Name a part of your body you sometimes seem to have no control over. Name a part of your body you sometimes seem to have no control over. Eyes. Final answer. What was that? Eyes. You know what I love about him? He's confident with his answers. He doesn't even wait for the audience or his partner to help out. He's just like, man, I got this. Shoot my shot. They're He's probably just, all wrong. Half, half court, shoot my shot. You know. All right, here we go. You got to uh, understand, too, when you – this question brings up so many other things that I could say, but I'm like, all right. How, well, how look, at the beginning of you know, the show – This is not at, Aries Lounge. That's all at, I'm saying. At the beginning of the show, we establish we keep it 100. Yeah. You don't have to uh, censor yourself. Now we get, to the game. we get to the game portion of, no, I'm not going to uh, no, no, we're say what I'm thinking just, because you know. that's just not right. Uh, depends on how much water I'm – oh, boy. All right. What was your answer? What was the answer you locked in, sir? Eyes. Eyes. My gosh, there you go. It is mouth. Mouth. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we have two strikes. Too many people running their mouth, huh? Okay. Hell yeah. Two strikes. I'm feeling very confident. We have it eight is. more. Eight dollars. We have a. <laughs> she could win eight dollars, theoretically. I don't think <sighs> it's going to happen. But look, you could go on the greatest run. Of uh indie show Wait. history, all right. Yeah, yeah let's do it. No, let's no, that's win not it. happening. Let's win it losing. This, Catherine said kidneys or rectum. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> just there's peeing and booing. Just ah, I can't control. There it, it goes. There, there it goes. You go. All right. If you like 90, probably. All right, here we go. Number three. This is it. This could end the game right here, or we can keep on going. Uh, yes, look. Oh, Regina, big shout out to Regina Seely out here getting her laugh on. All right, thank you for tapping in, love. Uh, question number three. It could be over right here. Name something you would hate to find in your cellar. Name something you would hate to find in your cellar. What's great about play the music? What's great about this is I'll be able to use these next seven questions for next week's show because <laughs> these first three questions is three strikes in a row. Man, I was that's what I'm guns thinking what I'm thinking. Um that that'd be the worst thing to find in there. But I, I like how many people were I mean, we're talking about hundred people were asked this question. Yeah, like, about a hundred a hundred people were asked. Did they all say that? You know, I mean the likelihood of them all being like a dead body. I don't I, mm. yeah, his gun is crazy. A that's, dead body. I, a snake, yes, spiders, a leak. Captain said more water. Keith Gunn played a dead body 
in the season premiere. Wild of the animal, TV stranger, show. dead person, all they gonna crack in your foundation. There's so many things you hate to find. So many. One more time. Oh. Name something you would hate to find in your cellar. Ladies and dead gentlemen, body. he I'm has to get it. this right dead or he wins fitness. nothing. Fitness. I would wait, hate wait. to find a dead body. Find a dead body. Dead body, a final dead body. answer. A bat. Nah, bats are all right. All right. Here we go. Do I get to keep my money tonight? Sir, Probably. they says. A rat or a mouse? As I look into the chat, <laughs> I see <laughs> Catherine. <laughs> Hello, Catherine. Let me put your cash out because somebody might feel generous and give you some money. Ma'am, <laughs> you wasted your one and only chance on Matt. And Matt <laughs> shot from half court without looking. <laughs> I think he had a blindfold on. Yeah, yeah I did. Like, I don't play basketball. He was just either. shooting up oh, yeah. shots. Yep. He was playing in your face with your money. He was just like, ah. Well, you it's, actually it's actually your money. It's actually your money, Matt. It could have been Catherine. Catherine. Catherine, this is our first strikeout. I think this is the first time we've had a complete strikeout. So, my guy Matt is famous tonight because he's the first <laughs> one to go down swinging. But thank you, Matt. Thank yeah. you for Run protecting it. the money that's in my wallet. If you would like to win money, come back next week because we plan. Uh, and I won't says, be here. So there you go. <laughs> Look, I have seven questions that need to be asked. I feel good. I can find three questions. I can find three questions. I can get the three old questions and still be good. But thank you, Matt. Thank you, Catherine, for rocking with us. All right. It's all it's all love. I appreciate y'all. We're going back to our interview with my guy, uh, Matt. Uh, Matt, uh, talk to me. What, as a DJ, what was your favorite and worst DJing gig? <laughs> I hear JS laughing because there's been a lot of really good ones. There's been some really good ones. Ah, man. So, so many. So many bad DJ <laughs> So many bad and so many. Uh, let's see. The worst of the worst. While you're thinking about it, what did you learn about yourself from these bad gigs? You know, a lot of these, a lot of them that come to mind are these ones where they're not necessarily like the the worst, but they're bad because something went wrong. And, you know, when you're relatively new to being a performer, you you react sometimes in a way that's not going to benefit you, right? You, I've mm -hmm. learned now, it's like, if something goes wrong, all right, show business, show must go on, figure mm -hmm. out how to solve it and move on from there. I think the experience I had, um, there was a show I did in this art loft. This was back before everybody wanted to like shoot their music videos in Krog tunnels, but it was like this mm -hmm. building that's near Krog. And, um, there were a bunch of artists performing and we were scheduled at a time to play. We did our sound check and then the promoter kept pushing us. He kept pushing us farther and farther and farther back. And so like our time, next artist, next artist, next artist. I'm watching all the other artists on the list. They, they're all playing, right? And then me and this other act that I'm, I'm supporting, I'm supposed to be me doing a partial set of just like records. And then this vocalist is supposed to come on. And they keep pushing and they keep pushing and they keep pushing it until now the headliner is like playing, right? And the headliner plays, right? And the headliner is Cool Breeze. Oh. Right? <laughs> the headliner is fucking Cool Breeze. Watch for the hook. Yeah, exactly. And so at the end of his set, then he goes outside and so does the crowd. And then the promoter's like, you guys are up. So then to throw... <laughs> So I'm already heated. And at this point, it's like, all right, well, we came to play. Uh, we're going to play. But there's now it's just and, it, and this is one of those things where it was like 
a lot of smaller acts in support of Cool Breeze, and each of those smaller acts brought their crowd. Mm -hmm. And so if all of those crowds are in a room, it's a big crowd, right? But all of those crowds are now gone, except for the crowd that we brought. So mm -hmm. it's significantly smaller. So we're like, all right, well, we're here, and our, our people came to see us, so we're going to play. And it, as we're playing, one of the other guys who was like a host of the thing comes on stage. And I was like, oh, this is cool. He's going to get us all hyped up and the crowd's going to come back. It's fine. Well, they don't come back. And this goof proceeds to like sling an open bottle of vodka all over my mixer and knocks my computer off the table. <laughs> and this was at a time when like DJing with a computer was like brand new. Like, mm -hmm. not normal. Everybody did it. Like, this was brand new. So, lucky me, I was able to, like, flip, and I had another mixer, and I just pulled that backup mixer out and hooked it up real quick and, like, started just playing records out of the crate that I had brought. And in the interim, in between, I just had my MC, like, beatbox and try to get the crowd going. But that was, like, probably one of the most worst wow. DJing experiences ever. It was just, like soul crushing yeah, uh needless right. to say i never worked with that promoter again because that's extremely unprofessional like don't give me a, a run of show and then don't have us play at that time and then push us after the headliner that's a terrible move bad business but also it's it's like without saying it it was basically like he just walked up and gave us the finger you know it was like you guys are on the bill but like w you don't matter and again it goes back to that like respect so um lucky i was able to clean my my first my main mixer and there was like you know minor damage but once i like dried all the circuitry everything worked hmm. um but like it didn't work at the time because it was soaked in vodka <laughs> so yeah that, that was that was rough um and it was very difficult not to like just leave and go fight that person uh yeah that was the that was where there was restraint it was like i i just want to i want to not play this show and now i want to hurt that person um and it, it was it was rough but you know you can't you cannot you cannot win them all <laughs> so and i made the, and in the end of the day i did make the right choice of not like working with the promoter again and also kind of just not from like a you know spreading rumors and drama but like if anyone asked me i'm like look I advise you maybe don't work with that promoter. You know, if you really want to know and we are on a friend level, sure. But for the most part, it was just, oh, you're playing a show. That's the promoter. I I'm sorry, but we won't be a supporting act or we won't play that show with you. And it's not about you, other musicians. It's about that promoter. And, you know, and eventually that promoter got pushed out because they, they we weren't the only people that were treated that way. But, mm. yeah, that was by far the the least enjoyable DJing experience of my life. <laughs> Let's take it back a few years. <laughs> VVC Radio, I want your perspective on why you wanted to start VVC Radio. That one's an interesting one because, you know, so like the JS and I were making music. Okay. Right. We were roommates. Um, I, he had an old MP. I had some production stuff and of course a bunch of records and you know, he wanted to rap and I wanted to scratch records and we wanted to play shows. And uh, so that it was just kind of born out of that. And one day he was like, Hey, I, I want to do this thing. And this was before like the word podcast was, a, was a normal everyday household thing. This was before like internet radio really existed. This was before streaming services. This was, you know, all of that. And he had this digital recorder and was like, hey, we're going to sit down and do like a, a, a variety show where we sit down and talk about subjects that we want to talk about, play music that we want to play, drink. <laughs> that was that was key. Yeah. This was the, this was the this was the beginning of Aries Lounge. It was like and, and you know, and it was the two of us. And then, of course, it, uh, at one time, uh, the, the general. So, of course, he was there like off slightly out of the room for the mm -hmm. like first recordings but the first recordings were done on this like track recorder and then eventually we would take those processed audio and put them you know up onto the website so they were playing and it wasn't live and streaming it was more of like we recorded the show and then tomorrow or the next day it's available mm -hmm. but it was just another way for me to get involved in music you know and 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 i was doing it with one of my friends and it was really like the two, we he's not gonna fight me on this we talk a lot of shit 
and mm-hmm. the two of, and, and 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 that's that's a beautiful part of our friendship is sometimes we talk shit to each other sometimes we just talk shit about the world sometimes it's about somebody else some you know but it's always a good time and and this was a way for us to just like take that same thing that we would do out in the driveway right or mm-hmm. wherever we were hanging out and put that into a show and then try to make it more of a platform and it became one of these things where like we were putting on events we were interviewing you know major label artists we had a a radio show and then we had multiple radio shows and then we had a radio station and and, you know and it just kind of grew from there but it all started with this like you know a couple of friends just wanting to sit around microphones and and record their their chat you know and and it grew from that so quickly and so rapidly and it was so much fun even even in the like the weirdest times, I was like, this is enjoyable. Um, <laughs> and so, like, you know, we just kept on going. And, you know, I'm happy it's still alive and kicking. That's what's up. That's what's up. So what I want to do, we've been talking about different aspects of your career. Why don't we go ahead and play one of your songs? <laughs> go ahead and set this one up, uh, my guy, uh, Matt. Uh, what is uh, Chapter 41? So what I'm, I started doing this, this thing where years ago I would just sit down and make songs. I have so many songs, like countless songs started back from like early two thousands. Right. And some of it's garbage and some of it's great. And it's like, there's, these things are just sitting unfinished songs. Right. Cause I would get distracted by this project or this project or this other job and so forth and so on. And so what I said at this goal, just right before beginning of 2024 was i want to release one single every month for all of 2024 and then maybe beyond and just see how i can go until i run out of steam on just doing a song a month um to try to clear out right some of its new content some of its old some of it's a mix of both but just to try to like all the stuff's not making any any waves whatsoever just sitting on a hard drive um so this one is called chapter 41 because it, I turned 41 this year. And this is just kind of like a, uh, a vibration of where my life was at at that particular month. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Chapter 41. Let's, it's the indie show. Let's go. Cause you hit me like a 
So proud of my boy, man. Do it. Feel free. I want to hear all the good and the bad. Ah, well, well, first of all, before before we go any further, I have dropped. You got to get on the screen. Look, you got to get on the screen for this. I'm not, yo. I promise you, I'm not camera ready right now. Ah, Okay, go, 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 go. Go put on your face now. Yeah, right. Facts. Hey, look, I put the link in the, the, the group. I put the link in the chat for the, everybody in the public. I put the link behind the joint. Yo, everybody go support. It's only a dollar for that record, but he's got a ton of other content and stuff that you could buy. So I want to say off the, off the top. The number two thing I want to say, I, I've been I'm so proud of my guy, bro. We've been making music for god damn 16 17 years and he's ever like when we first met i was producing and he was just djing and i you know i was just showing him little stuff and like he's been like took the little bit of stuff that i taught him and he's just turned it into some monster shit like yo this this is crazy bro the, I, I, and <laughs> yo the last joint he dropped i called him it was like yo you gotta send me that i gotta write to it and i've got like half a song done off of that but yo this is even this is crazy, man. I love it, man. Congratulations, bro. Like you have arrived into like being a fucking monster with this shit. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, and and I don't like I used to try to do this thing where and I think part of this too is goes to the like why I have so many pieces of music unfinished because I would try to have this concept J- JS could attest to this too. I would have this concept for albums and like every beat had to fit that that concept. Every song had to be in that and and I would overthink things. And what I realized is like the the ADD brain is like make a beat and I might not ever have more than just that, that like it might be an eight bar loop or it may be a whole thing. And what I realized is like as a DJ and someone who's like constantly all over the place, there's absolutely nothing wrong with having things just kind of go their way. And so it, if you listen to a lot of this stuff single wise that I've released this year and will continue to release, it's all like that. It might be a song that's actually like three or four parts, all different. Like some of it, the drums are completely different. Some of it's cohesive and same. It's just like wherever my mind is at at the time. And instead of trying to fight it and stay inside whatever box that one part of the song is, I'm just kind of just letting it go. Yeah. Cause um, I was like, where were you? What were you doing? to even come up with that cuz I was just like when it started off I was just like yeah this is the type of music I used to play when I was doing college radio I was like okay yeah I see you okay and then 
the mood changed. You dropped beats. I was just like, yo, I almost wanted to freestyle on this mug. I was, yeah, dude. do it. I make I make beats. Let the rappers come on. I'll sell Man, to you. I was, dude, Monad. <laughs> that that beat was look. Uh, in the private chat we were having, uh, Adria said uh, that drop though, and she ain't lying. Yeah. When that drop hit, I was just like, that, shit was crazy. that, that was joint nasty, was crazy. Though. Super nasty. Bravo. Let me uh, let me real quick. The people in the chat go back to the beginning. Re uh, Regina, I'm gonna call you Regina. If it's Regina, my bad. Regina said, "Loving the intro." Catherine followed up with, "That beat is nice." Yes. Chris, I don't know you, Chris, but I thank you for rocking with us. Chris said, don't sleep on him. All the flames. Uh, Regina says, yes, highway riding, hanging on the patio, all that. Yes. 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 You're going to be, you going to be, yes, your head going to be yeah. nodding just yeah. like that while you riding out 85, 95. Don't get a ticket because when that second half of that song hit, it's over for you. You're doing 100. <laughs> You doing that? You in your zone? You Word. in doubt? It's man, bro. Man, man. man I what? can hear this in a movie. I can hear this in a television oh, show. Yeah, yo, you, yeah, crazy, bro. You killed it. Killed it. Killed it. This nigga is. Yo, I remember <laughs> he used I'm to be surprised, dog. Look, bro. Yeah, bro. Nah, you know, <laughs> there was a time where I, yo, I would make beats and he would be like, bro, I'm never going to be with you. At. And I'd just be like, yo, keep working. Nigga, you have surpassed me times five, dog. Like you, like I'm like, I'm embarrassed. I'm like, shit, I need to get back on my shit. Like, God damn, bro. Crazy. Shout out to you, man. I, I, I won't, I won't tell you when I made that. <laughs> it might have been, been a couple years ago or whatever. Like it is what it is. Like he was sitting on that after he said about ten years. I've been sitting on. But that the thing about years. it is, is and the thing about it is, is as, it just goes back to it. Like yeah, you could be a beat maker, great. Mm -hmm. And 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 there are so many beatsmiths and beat makers, or producer, you, whatever you want to call yourself, right? You you making a beat, great. That there's so many people doing that in so many different styles. But as an engineer, I also realized that there's a way to try to take that to another level. And instead of me having to employ an engineer to do it, I'm doing it right. And so then I'm I'm again keeping things in house. But I've also learned how to make things better, not just for myself, but for my clients. So like, you know, a lot of this elevation, some of the stuff that I've released and will be releasing sounds it. I mean, you bob your head to it or whatever, but it's not there. Right. And then once I get it done with production and it's actually mixed and i'm actually mastering it and there's actually time put into just the engineering and i take the artist out of it and i'm looking at it from like a technical aspect then you end up with this this elevation those both of those things are very important but i think a lot of uh particularly younger producers will just like make a beat and the beat is amazing and then they just like run it through a compressor or a, or a brick wall limiter at the end to try to make it louder and then all they've done is distort and ruin a, a cool piece of music and then you hear it and you're like this is okay but it could be better um and so for me i think it's just been like learning right are you just, gonna put some of these songs together in like a, a, al a album yes so i'm gonna do all of these singles and then i'm gonna run them back and actually mix them so like uh the DJ makes them, not like mix them in the studio, right? Everything that's released is already finalized, but then I'm going to put them together into whatever order I want set list wise. And so they'll be mixed like a mixtape. Um, and then I'm going to release that and it's called short stories. I have no idea when it's coming out, but that's, that's the plan for all of these singles to eventually be one big project. Everybody's eager and waiting. On that one. Ah, I like the way your mind works. JS1 real quick. Let's do uh in the university. Ooh, yeah, yeah, he's the perfect person for this. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, let me let me find the goddamn thing. God damn it. There we go. In the <laughs> university, five questions for um, independent entrepreneurs. Let's go. Question number one. As an independent entrepreneur, who do you turn to for advice? You know, interestingly enough, uh, I think one of the first people I actually speak to is my wife. Um, she's also an entrepreneur in a completely different field. But when it comes to business, a lot of things are very similar. 
and she's extremely successful. And I, I mean, you know, also we live in the same space, so it's very easy to have that conversation and, and that, <laughs> and I, I value her, her, her input. Um, I think sometimes I'll run ideas by JS. I'll just call him be like, Hey man, what do you think about blah? Um, my brother is another one. Um, he's a, you know, works in a completely different industry, but it's nice again to be able to like bounce ideas off of people. Mm -hmm. Um, and then also I have colleagues, other engineers who I value and respect who we are on similar levels. And, you know, sometimes it's nice to have that discourse with somebody, uh, without having to be like, Hey, I don't, you know, I'm not taking your client. You're not taking my client, but what's the advice? What would you do in this situation? Um, but I think it's just nice to have a network of people you can communicate with, some who are in your industry and some who just understand business. True that. All right. Next question. What's the one misconception about owning your own business that people need to know the truth about? Oh, yeah, that it's easy. <laughs> it's not. It's, it's, so many people are like, oh, I'm going to get my own business and then it's just going to blow up. It's like, bro, you you don't realize that if you are if you if you're the business, you are the business. Right. So you're everything unless you hire a staff. But if you're not if you're a brand new business, chances are you don't really have much of a staff unless you have like, you know, you and some friends when you and the homies are like the rider dies and no one's pulling out a check. Right. Everybody's just putting in their free time to make this thing fly. Um, but it's work and it's way more work than you might think it is. And it, yes, it eventually does pay off, but there's so much more work in that than there is just going to some shitty job. And while those shitty jobs are like soul crushing, the workload is way less. There are so many people who work like, you know, terrible mundane jobs and are unhappy with the, the level of work they have. It's like, bro, you have to fold shirts every now and then, like. That's not, that's not hard work. It's you, if this, you're not responsible for any of this, you just, they pay you as long as you show up, your job's easy. And I've been in that position too. And thought that same thing, like, this is hard. I got to clean this place. I don't want to sweep the floor at this skate park. You know what? It's that's easy work in the grand scheme of things. Having your own business is so much work, but it's worth it. There it is. Like that one. Number three. Let's go. Someone watching this interview right now may be contemplating starting their own business. What advice would you give them? I mean, first of all, figure out what it is that you want. Right. What's your plan? What What do you want from it? What's your end goal? Right. I think people asked me this prior years ago, and it was like at the time I wasn't, you know, I was like, I just want to make some beats. I just want to that's at like the, you kind of have to have an idea of where you want to go next. You know, there, there are these old views of like make a plan and put it all out and have the, the business plan. Maybe that works for some people, but either way you need to have some sort of direction for where you're going to go with it more than just like, Oh, I'm going to start this business. I got my LLC and then I made some beats and now I blew up on TikTok. That's like your, that's, that's your, that's your whole goal. Sometimes that works, but usually, right, there's so much more, right? There's so much work in it, and you you just kind of have to be prepared before you go into something. You want to make sure that all of your groundwork is laid and established. First of all, whatever the business is, you should probably have a skill of that at some point. Like if you decide, I want to be a carpenter, well, you should probably apprentice with a with a seasoned carpenter before you start your own carpentry business. Same thing with, you know, engineering. Like I studied at other studios and worked as the intern. I went to school. I spent time as not the business owner before I got to the point where this is my business. You can't just jump into it and be like, all right, I got it all figured out because we don't. Nobody does. <laughs> OK, number four. This is beautiful. Dropping gems left and right. Does the fear of going it alone independently ever go away? That's a tough one because I kind of like being alone. Um, I uh, I get more work done when I'm not distracted. But, you know, on a deeper level, no, it probably never really does. You get to this point where, like, everything falls on you and you get so used to that that it doesn't necessarily go away. 
but you're so focused on the success of it that you're not being distracted by that fear, right? I mean, fear is is just you. So whether it's a fear of success in business or working in business alone or like fear of, you know, what if I fall down off of this playground? Like uh, fear is 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 up in your mind, right? So if you can recognize that fear is just there and nothing more, then you can push past that. And as long as you don't let the fear stop you from being willing to take, you know, another step, don't be afraid to try to step outside of your box and, and do something that you wouldn't want you wouldn't normally do like growth comes from being uncomfortable. So don't let the fear keep you from trying to grow. All right. Last, last question. We're going to land this plane. Let's get up out of here. Oh, my bad. What's the greatest joy you've gained from starting your own business? Uh, I think it's the, the, the know that like, I don't, I, I set my mind on a goal and I achieved that goal and it was what I wanted and it's concise and it doesn't hurt that it's in my house and I don't have to like get in a car and go drive and sit in a cubicle. Man. You know what I mean? Like I'm in it now. I could, I could work in it in the middle of the night. I can work at it early in the morning. I can work in it throughout the day. You know, I, it's here in my space and, and I like that from a convenience level but I, I also like knowing that like this was an empty room and the business didn't exist and there was no business license there were no clients there were no websites like i had nothing to show from that except for you know previous music i'd released before which was as a musician and an artist and i look at them as two separate businesses uh and so as, as far as the engineering business like i set out a goal to open a studio and i opened a studio and I now I'm keeping that studio afloat, right? So that's the next goal. It's like, all right, make it last. If I can get past the, you know, the so many years marks, right? You want to set your goals. Like, all right, first year, two years, five years. Where am I going from there? What's the profit? Is it is it worth it to keep it functioning? You know, you have to kind of have to, you also have to be real with yourself about those things. Like each year you got to look at it. Okay, is it worth it? But you really don't want to pick yourself too hard until after you've done it for at least five years. You know, um, but yeah, I set a goal and I, I achieved that goal. Well, congratulations. And we can tell. We got, yeah, put your hands together for our guest, Matthew Borland. Matthew, MTSC is in the building. Soundscape Conjurer, you see him right there. Dude, you've been dropping gems left and right. I thank you so much. With this time, if you had to choose someone tonight, who would you have voted for? Couldn't you? You mean out of the out, out of the of music we listen to? Yes. Yes. Oh, I already made my vote clear. Yeah, I'm not taking that back. You are. You already know. I made my vote very clear. Hey, hey. So, JS, <laughs> let's put it on the screen. Who is our winner? Man, y'all know what it is. The queen is running the building. Hey, give me some horns. Give me some of something, some cheers. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, our newest will be the judge of that champion. Comes from Memphis, Tennessee. Put your hands together for a Drea. Oh, my gosh. Thank you all so much. Look, at she's blushing for real. Look, I yeah. Am. You earned that one. I'm looking forward to your show. I'm going to let you know we're going to schedule it for some time in May. So y'all make sure y'all tap in for Adria representing Memphis. She's going to be doing her thing in May. So hopefully by the time that video is done, uh, it's done in time for your show. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. my gosh. I'm so excited. Thank yes. you. Yes. You were, hey, look, I'm gonna let you kick your shots right now because it's time for uh the last word. And the last word this is where everyone gets to we're going around the horn and everyone gets to kick their shots. I'm gonna start with the champ, Adria. What's your last word? Oh my gosh, thank you all so much. I am literally blushing. Um, I want to say shout out to the all the amazing artists. I loved everyone. 
uh, everyone's music. And I just want to keep the uh, say, keep going. Matt, I have enjoyed your interview so much. You have been dropping a lot of gems, a lot of wisdom, and I just appreciate you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much to the Indie Show for having me, um, for supporting me, to my fans. I love y'all, and I can't wait to the all set with. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you get your Grammys and all the other uh, awards, you ready. I can't wait to hear your, uh, your acceptance speeches. You are ready. JS, what's your last word? <laughs> Yo, I want to shout out to the queen. You know what I'm saying? You 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 done came through like a juggernaut, man, and and like killed the whole thing. So shout out to you. You know, shout out to my brother Matt. Yo, uh, I yo, I ain't even gonna lie. I totally forgot you was coming on the show. <laughs> so I, I didn't know that you were gonna operate the board. So I didn't. So, so I was just gonna be surprise. on the mastermind. <laughs> yeah. So like, it was so good to log in and see you there, bro. You know, I love you. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Mastermind. Shout out to Eddie Lingo in the chat. Shout out to Dad Panther. Shout out to everybody that tuned in. Um, yeah. what's the other name? Yo, it's a bunch of new people. Yo, uh, Regina Seely, I think if you're saying and Chris Jefferson, yo, we appreciate y'all, man. Catherine Patterson, please, please come back, keep supporting, and like, yo, like, uh, dope show. That's all I can say. Dope show. So, uh, Adria, make sure you don't uh log out so I can holler at you after the show is over. Of course, Matt, same thing, and I'm out. All right, Matt, last word. Kick your shot. Oh What's man. Up? Uh well, first of all, thank you for everybody who tuned in. Uh thank you Mastermind for having me. Um I, you know, we we're family and uh we go back a long time, but I appreciate the invite and having the chance to come on and, and chat with you and and um sorry I lost somebody some money, but oh well. Um, <laughs> it goes on. I'm not mad at all. I'm not mad I know at you're all. not. I know you're, you're not. You're not. Great job. No. And, and the way I look at it, too, is like I, I'm really happy to see that, like, after all of these years, like VVC Radio and, and, and all of its forms and facets are still going and kicking in that. And then, and that brings me joy because that is yet another business that I helped get off the ground. And, and it's nice to know that, like, with all the other things that have been going on in my life, be it family and music and career and this and that and the third, then I haven't had as much time to invest in it. That is still going. And that that brings me the most joy of the evening. So. Thank you. That's what's up. That is what's up. Look, it's a mini family reunion. I appreciate you, Matt. Really, when I, you are have been on a short list of mine to be on this show, and so when we were able to make it happen, that made me happy because I see your grind. I see from the skateboarding DJ to where you are now. I am super proud of you. Congratulations on everything from your family to your career to your music. It's nothing but love. Big shout out to JS. Thank you once again for making it happen. Adria, you are, Adria, you are fantastic. I'm looking for, we will talk, but yes, continued success to you. Everybody that's in the chat room, I appreciate you guys rocking with me. If you haven't already, find the indie show. Uh, however you stream your music, especially on Spotify, like, subscribe, not only subscribe from time to time, download one of the episodes and listen to it. That helps me. If you want to give me five stars, that helps me move up the, uh, the ladder so more people can see us. But as always, you're here with us every Tuesday at 8 p.m. I really appreciate it. One time for your mind. It's your man, Mastermind. I love y'all. I see y'all soon. And uh, next week, it's going down. Uh, Adria Ward, filmmaker and <laughs> entrepreneur, is in the building. I holler at y'all. Peace out. Hey, yo. Indie show, indeed, the flow's sickening. Masterminded by mastermind, the fly dickens. Good riddance to other pies, the eyes against them. Tuesday at 8 p.m., we back in business. Key is in the building, Jay is in the building. Giving the feeling that most of y'all been missing. All things indie, is it banging or whack? Can't call it, but we'll be the judge of that. And logic came through with the verbal assist. Major League, we indie, ain't no canceling this. And logic came through with the verbal assist. Major League, we indie, ain't no canceling this. And I'm